So in this video, we'll be learning about how we can run the ESP async web server on the ESP266 and ESP32 board. And after that, we'll also learn about how to run the MDNS server on both the boards. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, let me tell you that I'm running a series whose aim is to make a local area network based home automation system in which we can control the appliances from the web page and we can also monitor the sensors data on that web page. I will be using the ESP266 and ESP32 board running a web server on it so we don't require an external router or an external server for that. So during this journey, we'll be learning about WebSocket server, web servers, MDNS server, then HTML, JavaScript, and many more such things, okay? So I've divided each and every topic with different episodes. So if you are interested in making this project, or if you are interested in any of the topic which I discussed just now, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the episode. So that being said, let's start with the first episode where we'll be learning about the async web server and the MDNS server. Let's jump onto the computer. So this is a core for the first episode and I'll be going through each and every line and explaining you the purpose of that line in the code. Starting with these all lines then, uh, these all lines in the code are written just to make this code comfortable with both ESP266 and ESP32 board. See what happens is there are some of the libraries which are dedicatedly made for ESP266 boards and there are some libraries which are dedicatedly made for ESP32 boards. So what I did here is I just mentioned one if condition that if ESP266 board is declared, use the libraries made for ESP266 and if the ESP32 board is declared, use the library made for ESP32 board. So as you can see, here is the if condition, then if ESP266, use this libraries and if it's ESP32 board, use this libraries. So these lines will make the code more dynamic and more flexible, okay? After that, we are using the library called ESP async web server now. This library may not be included in your boards package. In my previous video, I said that it is included in the boards packages, but it is not included. The ESP266 web server libraries is included with the ESP266 board packages. Now, this is different than the web server. Uh, now, how it is different for that, you can just go to their website and here they have mentioned some of the benefits of async web server as compared to the web server. Out of that, the key feature is, the key benefit is, it can handle more than one connection at the same time. And there are several more benefits of using async web server, okay? So if you want to read out this, I will attach a link for this page in the description. So after reading the benefit, you can just download this library from here and install it on your Arduino ID, okay? So after installing the library, I just move ahead with the code. So after that, I will declare the server and initialize the server at port 80, okay? So now some of you must be knowing that port 80 is made for HTTP protocol, okay? So using this port, we can, you know, uh, communicate between the server and the client using the HTTP protocol. So there are some of the ports which are dedicatedly made for different protocols. So if I uh, show you this page, then this page will tell you that which protocol uses which port. So if I go ahead with the port 80, then as you can see, this port is utilized by the HTTP protocol. Protocol. And the HTTPS protocol is assigned to 443 port number if I'm not wrong. So yeah, here it is. So 443 port number is assigned to HTTPS protocol. So there are different ports dedicatedly made for different protocols, but not all the ports are engaged. There are some protocols which are not a lot utilized, which we can use it for our projects. Okay. So let's just jump back to the code. So here we are using the HTTP protocol, hence I'm initializing the server at port 80. Okay. After that, I'm using the function called void not found. Now I'll let you know the use case of this function later in this video, okay? So moving ahead with the setup part of the code. So first of all, I'm initializing the serial monitor or the serial communication at the baud rate 115200, okay? After that, I'm using this wifi.soft ap function. Now let me tell you something. Uh, you must have made the web server based projects using ESP266 or ESP32 board in which you uh, must have connected the ESP boards with your router and the router will assign a local IP address to the ESP board. And using that local IP address, we can communicate with the web server running on the ESP boards. But in this project or rather in this whole series, we won't be using that matter. Rather than we'll be making our ESP board acting as a hotspot or maybe acting as an access point on which we'll be connecting our clients, maybe a laptop or smartphone, okay? So with that, uh, we don't need an external router for this. We can just directly connect our smartphone with the access point credentials provided by the ESP uh, server, okay? So for that, you have to use this wifi.soft ap function. So inside that function, you have to provide two parameters. One is the SID name and second is the password. So for the SID name, I provided techie SMS. And for the password, I just uh, put it blank because I want to make it as an open network. But if you want to make it more secure, you can just write down the password for your uh, ESP acting as a hotspot hot or access point, okay? 
After that, I'm just printing soft AP on the serial monitor. And after that, I will be printing the IP address of the soft AP. So generally, this IP address is common 192.168.4.1. Okay, so that IP address will be shown on the serial monitor. And by just typing that IP address on our smartphone, we can access the web server running on the ESP266 board. Okay. So after this, I have commented some of the line. Uh, this is used for MDNS server, which we'll be discussing in the second part of the video. Okay. So let's just skip it for now. So after that, we have three more functions, which are server.on, server.on not found, and server.begin, okay? So first of all, let's discuss the server.begin, and after that, we'll be discussing these two uh, functions practically uh, with the web browsers, okay? So what server.begin function will do, it will just start the web server, okay? As we use the serial.begin to initialize the serial communication, in the same manner, I will we'll be using server.begin to initialize the web server uh, on the ESP based board. Okay, so this will start the web server on it. Now, what I will do, I'll straight away upload this code. And after that, we'll see that what's the use of this, this and this function inside the code. Okay, so let us select the right board and port. So currently I'm using this ESP32 board. So board is already selected and the port is also selected. What I will do, I'll straight away upload this code onto my ESP32 board. But this code will work on Node MCU board as well. Okay. Okay, so code is successfully uploaded and let us open the serial monitor and let me just reset this board, okay. Okay, so as you can see here it is printed as soft AP and the IP address is printed on the board. So first of all what we'll do is we need to connect our laptop or mobile phone to the access point created by the ESP32 board. So for that I'll go to my Wi-Fi settings and uh, yeah, here is one network with the name Techie SMS. So I'll connect my laptop to it. So yes, we are successfully connected with the ESP board acting as a access point. Now we'll go to this IP address. So for that, we'll open this web browser. And here I will request one link 192.168.4.1. Okay. Okay. So as you can see here, hello world is printed on the screen. Now let us understand the code. Okay. So what happens is whenever you request the uh, IP address, it is basically the home page of that web server, okay, which is defined by a backslash. So if I write IP address backslash, it will land on the same page, okay. So this is basically the home page. So here on the server.on function, we have defined the home page by writing the backslash. So what this function says that whenever I receive this backslash from the a client, from any of the client, I need to send hello world to that client, okay? So when you are requesting the IP address or basically whenever we are requesting the home page, uh, this function will be called and inside this function, I have first of all declared a string with the name message. Inside that message, I have written as hello world and that string is sent by this request send function, okay? So here we have provided three parameters. The first is the status code. So 200 status code is for a successful communication. Then we will be providing that uh, by which method we are sending the data. So basically we are sending the plain text message. Textless HTML may also work, but text slash plain makes much more sense, okay? So I'll just write text plain. After that, we need to provide the payload. So here in our case, the payload is the message, okay? So this is a string, okay? So whenever a client is requesting a home page, it will just print hello world on the screen, which we have already seen inside the web browser, okay? If I refresh this page, as you can see, I'm getting the hello world response. So this is the importance of this uh, server.on function. After that, let's just see the importance of server.notfound. Now, what if I request the link slash page one, okay? Uh, if I click on the enter button, let's see what happens. So it says not found, okay? So let's see why it is printed as not found. So as you can see in the code, we have only one function that is responding to the clients, okay? Now this function will return the data to the clients only if the client is requesting the home page. Now, if a client requests any other page, first of all, we need to define the page inside the web server, then the ESP board can serve the web page to the client, okay? But right now, in this case, we don't have any other page except the home page. And that's why what this code did is, uh, as, it, as it didn't find that page inside the web server, it just uh, straight away called this function called on not found. So this function will be called whenever a page requested by the client is not present inside your web server, okay? So in this condition, the client requested a page one, which was not at all defined in the web server. Hence this programmed uh, jumped into the on not found. And inside the on not found function, we have defined one more function called not found. And if you go inside this not found function, we are sending the response to the client as, first of all, we'll send the 404 status code, which is responsible for page not found, okay? After that, we are just sending the text slash plane, which we have discussed here as well. And after that, we are just sending the payload as not found, which is printed here, okay? 
okay if i just uh, write here as uh, page not found then this particular string will be printed inside the web page okay so this was all about the basic web server code running on our uh, system now let us take in one more step let us define that page one here okay for that i will just copy this much line of code we'll paste it here we'll write page one inside the uri okay now whenever we are defining any uri other than the home page we need to define the uh, http uh, request method okay so the client will be requesting with the http get method so we need to define uh, here the method through which the client will be requesting the data okay so i return the http get method so whenever uh, any client is requesting this page uh, what i will do is i will just print welcome to page one okay so this will be the response which will be sent to the uh, server by the text plane method okay so this will be returned to the server with the status code 200 okay so we do have one more page inside the web server okay so if i upload this code i should get the response on the page one as well okay okay so the code is successfully uploaded Okay, the soft API started. Uh, my computer is already connected to Reki SMS. And now if I just uh, enter this uh, URL, ah, as you can see, we have got the response as welcome to page one because the page one already exists inside the ESP web server. Okay, now if I write any page two, uh, that won't be detected by the server. Hence, it will print as page not found okay as you can see the page not found is printed so this was all about the explanation of the code now one more thing is remaining with uh, uh, this episode is the mdns server now what happens is so here as you can see we have to define the ip address whenever we want to communicate with the uh, esp web server but what happens is our human brains uh, can remember the name much more uh, easily as compared to the numbers while these computers and the machines can remember the numbers better than the name okay so uh, make so to make the communication between the human and the machine easier mdns comes in the picture what mdns or what dns will do uh, dns stands for domain name server okay so what dns will do uh, dns will assign a name to an ip address okay for example you write google.com but google.com is not directly given to that machine the, the google.com will be given to the domain name server and domain name server will see that which ip address is uh, uh, assigned for google.com after that it will give the ip address and through the ip address the machine will communicate between each other okay so that's the importance of dns so mdns makes our task way more easier because we don't need to remember the ip address at all we can just remember the name of that uh, server or the computer okay so here just let's just type the mdns code so i will just uncomment this much line of code so here we have to define the name which we want to assign to this ip address so in my case i have written sesp okay so if I just upload this much line of code, uh, let's see what's the difference, okay? Okay, so the code is successfully uploaded. If I want the serial monitor, as you can see, the soft API is started and after that MDNS responder is also started. Let us jump onto the web browser. Before that, let me just confirm that the computer is connected to ESP access point. Yeah, it is connected to the tech SMS access point only, okay? So what happens is if I request the IP address, the, this project will work as before, okay? So as you can see, the hello world is printed, which is as expected. But now if I type ESP, dot local and if i request this much line of code okay so as you can see by requesting the esp dot local uh, backslash we are getting the same response now if i write esp dot local slash page one yeah i got the same response as welcome to page one so do you notice the difference so using the mdns server now we don't need to remember the ip address we can just write esp dot local and we can just write our uh, web page on which we need to land like page one page two any of the page which you have created and we are good to go to that page so no need to remember the ip address anymore thanks to mdns okay so this was all about the, the you know, task of the first episode we learned about the esp async web server we learned about the mdns web server as well so ending this episode here so in the next episode we're learning about the basic of html and we'll be creating an html page and we'll sending that page to that uh, to the client okay so yeah ending this video here this was all about the first episode i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed it i hope you loved it so just wait for my next video and then explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.